Yes, I'd like to um, apologize for this because, uh, but I think it's an important question. We have a brother here who was an invited, special invited guest who just declined to speak. But I think that there is an important question I want to ask, and I believe that he would answer it. You know that Brother Khalid had an attack on his life recently. And I'd like to know, uh, in the context of what we're trying to do here, does that have any significance or relevancy to this whole forum and what we're trying to talk about? Brother Khalid, would you address that question? In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Bear witness that there is but one God came in the person here to the hells of North America in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. We forever thank him for raising up his messenger and his Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank the two of them for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet you, my brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Upon being invited, of course, in my absence from the city, and speaking to one who spoke to those who extended the invitation, I said that I would not speak here tonight because I did not feel it appropriate and that is still my feeling for if you'll be patient you'll get the why <laughs> buckle your seat belt it has been now one year since my suspension from national spokesman, Minister Malcolm was the first great national spokesman of the Nation of Islam. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was the second and chose me to be the third in that line. It has been a year since my suspension from national assistant, spokesman or representative and from the ministry. And during that year, now over a year, has become an indefinite suspension. I have made attempts to reach my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I have not really been able to set up a meeting successfully with him. Certainly there, why don't you be quiet for a minute? Let me answer the questions. As difficult as it was, and I didn't mean any disrespect, but I was answering your disrespect. As difficult as it is to even stand up here, don't prompt me. Don't push me. You push me to say something that maybe I shouldn't say or wouldn't have said, as Malcolm was probably prompted and pushed too much 30 years ago. This has happened almost 30 years to the day in many ways. I didn't set it that way and I didn't plan it that way. It started in November 30 years ago. It started again in November 30 years later at King College. Many other parallels that are not necessary to go into now, but one in particular. Malcolm, it is true, made attempts to reach the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We don't know if his calls were being intercepted. We don't know if his mail was being intercepted. We don't know what government operatives worked between Malcolm and his spiritual father. I have, for the most part, not spoken on this subject because I am still waiting for my meeting with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And until I have that meeting with him, there are things that I would like to hear from him. And there are things 
as a son would say that I would like to say to him and I don't think I should say them to you before I say them to him and some of you might not agree with that I believe I understand brother Malcolm more today than I have ever understood him before I was not in the nation of Islam 30 years ago I was in my mid-teens at that time down in Houston Texas and had not yet moved on to the university where I would meet the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as a young student leader there in New Orleans. So there are many things on my heart, but I think if you will permit me to be just a little wise today, it would be better, and I'm sure if you will weigh it, you would agree with me. I don't know how long it will take, it's been over a year. But during that year, I have not said as little as a word, nor as much as a sentence against my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And no matter what I have on my heart, again, I think it should be said between father and son, behind closed doors, and some resolution made behind closed doors before I come back to the broader community and the broader family. I have many questions to ask. Keene College was not a speech where I stood up to condemn my teacher. Keene College was not a speech where I was going into his domestic life. Keene College was a speech as all of my speeches where I was given the white man hell and I will continue to do that, and I make no apology for that. And so I'm still tender about that subject. Jews, so-called Jews, outside of that auditorium calling for his death. I was in a war spirit and a war posture, and I felt that I did what was right. Felt that I should have even done more. It should have gone beyond the rostrum and should have been taken outside as we did in Los Angeles when we drove them away from the convention center and drove them running down the streets. I wonder what would have been done then. So for the president to come out, Bill, Willie, Slick Willie, the vice president, the United States Senate to vote unanimously against me, for the first time, the House of Representatives and the full Congress and all of the mayors and governors and city councils and state assemblies and Negro organizations and Negro preachers, Ben Chavis, Reverend Behind, Reverend Butts, <laughs> some of the other Negroes who came out against me, Jesse Lewis Jackson, who called the white folks, they didn't have to call him, he called them. Ben Chavis bragged in this city on TV how he was the first to call Minister Farrakhan to say something needed to be done about Khaled. All of that and my last word. What's on my heart, I'll have to hold. As the old folks say, I'm just going to tarry a while. And I'm going to wait until my change comes. I don't believe that no matter how long it takes, I will continue the liberation struggle for our people. But no matter how long it takes, I don't believe you will be finding Colin coming out against Louis Farrakhan. Whatever happened 30 years ago between the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, today, Malcolm with the honorable Elijah Muhammad 30 years ago, and Minister Farrakhan with Khaled today, hopefully, prayerfully, Farrakhan and Khaled can put a positive period behind the history of Elijah and Mark. Thank you.
Sister and brothers, the hour is late. We're going to have to cut the questions. We want to thank Brother Khaled Muhammad, and I also want to, at this point, I'm, I'm sorry. We just, you know, we just have to cut the questions right here. I want to invite the speaker to the, the washroom, Sister Joan Gibbs, who's with the Malcolm X Commemoration Committee, and with the Medgar Scarlet Center for Law and Justice. Sister Joan Gibbs. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to be brief because I do know how to be brief. And I want to thank all of you on behalf of the committee for coming out tonight and re-invite you to join us in May because as this marks the 30th anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm, this also marks the 70th anniversary of his birth. And in that spirit in May, we will have a week-long series of events. And I also want to point out to you, because the question has been raised repeatedly about how events like this is divisive, when the Malcolm X Committee worked not only to preserve Malcolm's legacy, we don't do it as an abstraction, but we do it because we think that Malcolm's teachings are important to the rebuilding and Yes, the rebuilding of the Black Liberation Movement, and that's why, principally, we work to teach Mount. We don't do it, we work to preserve his legacy. We don't do it because he's an icon or he's a god or anything like that. But we think that the brother taught us some things that are vital to our movement today. The second thing, we, in examining the assassination, people have talked tonight about the role of the U.S. government. And we think that's important for our people to understand the U.S. government and understand our relationship to that government. And that our people have been at war with that government ever since we got here. And we need to continue that war until we win it and liberate ourselves as the people. But we can only do that if we understand the nature of the beast that we're fighting. And you know, it was said earlier tonight, and I think we need to remember that the FBI chief among all of the agencies of the United States government, only exceeded by the CIA, is one of our principal enemies. And we need to keep them out of our mess. Finally, I want to say, because I think it's also important, this, these events are just not to get you out to listen, but we want to urge you to do something. And what I always try to urge people to do is really get behind the struggle for political prisoners. I talked this morning to a, one of the longest held political prisoners in the United States, my brother Sandiana Akoli, and he asked me to encourage you to do that. Also, the right to him and the other political prisoners, Sandiata was recently given another 20 years, denied parole, and he needs our support because we know the brother is there in part because they don't have the sister asylum, and we need to help to get Sandiata out. Thank you, get home safely, and please pick up the literature about Mamiya in the back, and pick up some information, sign the petitions for Mamiya, and join us in May. Thank you.